an international team of scientists has described the mortal remains of an ancient human fossil found in China, that differs from any other hominin ever discovered. The ancient skull is unlike any human ever seen, but had it been found in Africa it would be heralded as an early Homo sapiens. In fact, the fossil bears no resemblance to the lineage that gave rise to Neanderthals, Denisovans, or modern humans, implying that our current version of the human family tree requires another branch. The mortal remains, according to the researchers, not only add to the expected variation of these middle Pleistocene humans, recombining features seen in other individuals from the same time period, but also foreshadow developments in modern humans, demonstrating regional continuity. The jaw, skull, and leg bones of this unclassified human, known as HLD6, were discovered in Hualongdong, East Asia. Experts have struggled to match the remains to a known lineage in the years since, because calling it an early Homo sapiens would destroy the out of Africa hypothesis. While the Jebel Erhoud skull from Morocco has been heralded as an early Homo sapiens, skulls from China actually have more features that are similar to Homo sapiens. The face of the hominin is structured similarly to that of the modern human lineage, which split from Homo erectus 750,000 years ago. Nevertheless, the individual's lack of a chin resembles that of a Denisovan, an extinct species of ancient human in Asia that split from Neanderthals over 400,000 years ago. The skull, in particular, has a low and wide brain case with a projecting brow but a less prominent mid-face and an incipient chin. In contrast to other archaic East Asian fossils, the teeth are simple in shape, and the third molar is either reduced in size or absent. The fossilized jaw and skull belong to a 12 or 13 year old, and while its face has modern human features, the limbs, skull cap, and jaw seem to reflect more primitive traits, according to the researchers. The fossils were discovered in Hualongdong, which is now part of East China. They were then subjected to morphological and geometric evaluations, with the initial focus on the jawbone, which had distinct features, a triangular lower edge and a unique bend. According to the researchers, the jawbone's unique features resemble those of both modern humans and late Pleistocene hominids. Yet, they discovered that it lacked a chin, implying that it was more closely related to older species. Other features resembling middle Pleistocene hominins were discovered implying that the individual most closely resembled a Homo erectus species. They conclude that this suggests a hybrid of modern humans and ancient hominids. Indeed, the researchers note that the combination of features has never been observed in East Asian hominids before, implying that traits found in modern humans first appeared 300,000 years ago. Turning their attention to the skull, which had previously been discovered to be the first middle Pleistocene human skull discovered in southeastern China. The research team had discovered that the bones in its face were more similar to those in modern humans than the jawbone. The team ruled out Denisovan as a possible species for the remains. That left them with the possibility that the fossils belong to a fourth lineage, one that isn't Denisovan or Homo erectus or Neanderthals and is more closely related to Homo sapiens. And, if this is the case, the species would have had some evolutionary relationships with middle or late Pleistocene hominins, resulting in shared characteristics. In fact, researchers believe they have discovered an entirely new lineage, a hybrid of the branch that gave us modern humans and the branch that gave us Denisovans and other ancient hominins in the region. Historically, many Pleistocene hominin fossils discovered in China have not easily fit into any one lineage. As a result, such remains are frequently explained away as intermediate variations on a straight path to modern humanity, for example, as an archaic example of a Homo sapien or an advanced form of Homo erectus. Nonetheless, this rather linear and simplistic interpretation is contentious and not widely accepted. While Homo erectus lived in Indonesia until about 100,000 years ago, the remains recently discovered in East China bear a stronger resemblance to other, more modern hominin lineages. Previously, genome studies on Neanderthal remains in Europe and Western Asia discovered evidence of a fourth hominin lineage living in the middle to late Pleistocene epoch. Excavations in Middle Pleistocene cave deposits in southeastern China yielded a nearly complete skull, that not only resembles other East Asian Middle and Late Pleistocene archaic human remains, but also foreshadows later modern human forms, according to researchers. However, this unidentified group has never been found in the fossil record. Perhaps the recent discovery of human remains in China is a missing piece of the puzzle. The pattern of archaic human evolution and modern human emergence in East Asia during the Pleistocene is complicated by fragmentary and scattered fossil evidence for human evolution. 
their findings complicate the road to modern humanity. Instead, the mosaic of physical features found in this ancient hominin supports the coexistence of three lineages in Asia, Homo erectus, Denisovan, and this other lineage that is phylogenetically close to us. Therefore, although Homo sapiens did not appear in China until around 120,000 years ago, it appears that some of our modern characteristics existed much earlier. It is possible that the last common ancestor of modern humans and Neanderthals emerged in Southwest Asia and spread to all continents. More archaeological research will be needed to confirm that theory. Meanwhile, the Dali cranium from China is also of interest to anthropologists, because it may be another well-preserved example of archaic Homo sapiens, with traits from both Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. The details of the face and skull distinguish it from European Neanderthals and earlier European hominids, such as those discovered in Petrolona Cave in Greece and Atapuerca in Spain. An analysis of the ancient Chinese Dali skull suggests that it is eerily similar to the earliest known fossils of our species, which were discovered in Morocco, some 10,000 kilometers to the west. The skull suggests that modern humans are not solely descended from African ancestors, as is commonly believed. According to John Hawkes of the University of Wisconsin, comparing the Dali and Moroccan skulls is instructive. He is open to the possibility that the Dali individual belonged to the ancestors of our species. In a real sense, we're talking about a multi-regional population that's linked repeatedly by migration and genetic exchanges, he told New Scientist magazine. Based on fossil evidence, most anthropologists believe our species evolved in Africa around 200,000 years ago. Furthermore, genetic studies of modern humans show that we are all descended from a single population that migrated from Africa to the rest of the world within the last 120,000 years. Except for a few genes gained through interbreeding with other species such as Neanderthals, this African group is the source of all modern human genes. However, the Dali skull may complicate this story. It was discovered in 1978 in China's Shaanxi province and is remarkably complete, retaining both the face and the brain case. According to a peer-reviewed study, the skull is approximately 260,000 years old, making it contemporary with the Moroccan skulls. When the Dali skull was first described in 1979, researchers assumed it belonged to Homo erectus. This hominin species arrived in Southeast Asia 1.8 million years ago and most likely vanished by 100,000 years ago. That idea is consistent with the standard story of human evolution. However, the Dali skull's face shared many characteristics with our species, Homo sapiens. This suggested that Homo erectus in East Asia may have played a role in the evolution of Homo sapiens. In other words, some of the DNA in living humans may have originated from Asian Homo erectus, according to scientists. Many researchers today reject this idea because it contradicts the conventional out-of-Africa model. But, we still don't fully understand the origins of Homo sapiens. The Dali skull was reanalyzed and compared to other hominin skulls, including Homo erectus and early Homo sapiens. They discovered that the Dali skull is similar to early Homo sapiens skulls discovered in Morocco at Jebel Erhoud. They are, in other words, twins from another continent, though not every anthropologist agrees that Jebel Erhoud is an early Homo sapiens. Researchers discovered fragments of a third Homo sapiens skull at Jebel Erhoud, and dated the fossils to around 315,000 years ago. This pushed the origin of our species back by 115,000 years. The Jebel Erhoud skulls, like the Dali skull, have Homo sapiens-like faces, but their brain cases and jaws appear more primitive. The Moroccan skulls support the theory that Homo sapiens evolved solely in Africa, from populations of hominins living on the continent. Nonetheless, the Dali skull suggests that the story was more complicated than this simple theory. For example, it's possible that African hominins were not genetically isolated from those in Eurasia. Small-scale movements of individual hominins, such as young adults leaving their family group and joining another, could have allowed genes to spread across Africa and Eurasia. According to this theory, the genetic features of Homo sapiens that appeared in Morocco 315,000 years ago, could have appeared in individuals living in China 260,000 years ago, such as the Dali skull. But, there's another implication here. Some of the traits seen in Europe and Africa may have originated in Asia due to bidirectional gene flow. The shuttle dispersal model of human evolution describes this scenario, as we discussed in another video. In other words, 
Some characteristics associated with Homo sapiens may have originated in East Asia before spreading to Africa. If this is correct, our ancestors are not solely African hominins. In fact, genes for lighter skin pigmentation evolved around 1 million years ago, suggesting that these genes came from an ancestor who lived in a northern climate. According to Chris Stringer of the Natural History Museum in London, the Dali skull has some similarities to Moroccan skulls, but not enough to support these theories. And, when it comes to the vast amount of genetic data, it becomes very difficult to give China a significant role in modern human origins. Stringer does not rule out the possibility that genes from Eurasia played a role in the evolution of Homo sapiens. At this time, I'm open to Asian-African connections, but only Western Asia-Africa, nothing further afield, he told, New Scientist, magazine. Alternative explanations include Homo sapiens leaving Africa much earlier than previously thought, reaching China by 260,000 years ago, which contradicts genetic evidence, or Asian Homo erectus independently evolving some modern human traits, but these, proto-humans, left no descendants. The extinction of other hominins wiped out all intermediate species between us and other apes, giving the impression that there is a vast, unbridgeable chasm separating us from the rest of life on Earth. However, if those species still existed, the division would be far less clear. What appears to be a bright, sharp dividing line is actually an extinction artifact. The discovery of these extinct species has redrawn that line, demonstrating how the gap between us and other animals grew gradually over millennia. Some of these species had skeletons and DNA that were startlingly similar to ours. Far less is known about other species, but based on their large brains and human-like skulls, it's reasonable to assume they were very similar to us. Nevertheless, while our ancestors most likely contributed to the extinction of some of these species, there must have been times when we looked past our differences to discover our common humanity.